Moogly Moogly. It's another fish pod. Hey everybody, Jay Smith here with uh, episode nine of Fish Pod. Uh, it's December, and this is one of my favorite times of the year because the cold fronts start coming through, the fish start biting, and less boats on the water because, let's face it, some people are sissies. They don't want to get out there in the wind, and it's a little chilly in the morning. No reason to stay home, though. But uh, So less boats on the water, and even more important than that, less jet skis. And uh, I realize that the water's for everybody. I get it. I get it. But let's face it, sometimes you kind of wish you had a bazooka. Oh, don't look at me like that. Like you never thought about it. Not even once. Huh? Not even once? Stop. Anyways, this is one of my favorite times of the year to get out and, and, and chase after redfish because you get these negative low tides. They get all funneled in one little area some places. It's a lot of fun. Get out there, sight fish, watch them take your bait. It's awesome. Uh, so this week we had Jake Fernandez come in and talk about shallow water fishing and what he does when uh, he's in this time of year and getting out there and getting skinny. Uh, check it out. That's a sweet catfish. Sweet catfish? That one right there, sweet cat. It's a nice cat. This? Oh, gosh, came out that. Oh, uh, GT? Okay. Oh, yeah, about the, the giant trevally. You guys been fishing at all this week? No, man. I've been working all day this week, man. Every day. Hmm. Sucks. I fished today. Did you? Yeah. Where at? North? I went to <laughs> Pasigrill <laughs> today. I Pass went grill. off Pasigrill and got... And I got one, what's it called, triple tail. It was pretty nice out today. I came, when I was coming off across the bridge here, I can't, I don't know, one o'clock. I was like, what am I doing, man? <laughs> and the girls coming here, I'm like, man, I should go, just go back. Yeah. And, and the golf, it was bad today. Was it? We were getting our, we were getting our bus. You know what's been weird about this time of year? It's super windy in the morning. Yeah. And in the afternoon, it calms dies down. out. It dies <laughs> down, man. It's really good for what we do, too. So. Well, plus with the, the tides the way it's been lately, and then, uh, you know, it warms up a little bit in the afternoon anyway. It kind of yeah. plays out in our mm -hmm. favor anyway. Exactly, yeah. I, I haven't been able to get out fishing much at all, man. I've been so wrapped up in doing all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it was hard, man. I was yeah. driving over, I'm like, Argh. yeah, Finals, finals too. Oh, oh yeah? Been, yeah. I took a final this morning from 9.30 to 11, then I was fishing by 12. Well, at least you went out. <laughs> yeah, <man>. exactly. <laughs> I know, um, right? Would you uh, have the boat at, at school with you? you were, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the way. On the parking lot. Yeah, I parked out in the street. <laughs> yeah. um, we got one probably six and a half pound triple tail. Nice. Yeah, which yeah, wasn't bad. It was the going. only one that we saw at in it's over 250 traps. See anything with it being as rough as it was. Yeah. 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 That's a trap. Yeah. So this time of year, tides are low, windy conditions and all that stuff. Uh, we were talking yesterday and I was was like this guy's yeah, you know, this that's how I like to fish. I like to get in the skinny water. I like to hunt yeah. fish. I want to see him take the bait and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh we were talking about how important it is to pull a lot. And, yes. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, could you embellish on that? Absolutely. So, um, our type of fishing, you know, we have technical pulling skiffs. It's that's all we do in this time of year, especially. Um, so, what we look for is negative tide. You know, no water, and this is how you pretty much find these fish if you're not familiar with an area. Um, also, in low tide like this, you can actually figure out the flat. You can see where all the depressions it, you know, right. on the flat. You can see where the troughs are, where the oyster beds are, and stuff like that. Um, so how we do it is mainly Kyle pulls. You know, he's that's what he's really good at. And then I'm there's an art form to that. There is. There is an art form yeah. to that. It is very difficult. Um, yeah. He's more he's better at um, you know, putting you exactly where you need to be. Uh I'm more of the presentation type of guy to, you know, put onto the fish. Right. So what we do is if any nervous water we look for, even if you look for a mullet, that's always a good sign because when we were fishing at the other day, these redfish were mixed in with the mullet. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. How we do it is to get on these fish properly, um, once you find a school of redfish or if you see them tailing, usually when they're tailing, they are feeding. And uh, my go-to bait for these fish in the wintertime are worms. Right. And the reason why, uh, you know, also in the wintertime, you have crustaceans, what they usually feed on now, you know, little fiddler crabs, shrimp, and lugworms. Redfish's diet, 25% of redfish's diet is lugworms. And you'll find these lugworms in sponges and oyster bars, stuff like that. That's why they're with the mullet. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The mullet's stirring everything. Stirring up, up, yeah. So 
I throw these worms. Um, 90% of the time when you're throwing at a school of tailors, they eat these worms. I've thrown everything I've had before, and they would not touch it. Once we put on these worms, they smoked them. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Almost every time. So when they're tailing, you really don't have – you're not going to spook these fish. You might. Something in the, mo- in the water might spook these fish. But usually when there's, these fish are tailing, you can throw right over the school, bring it in. Once you bring it in, just pop it a couple times. A little and twitch gonna, here and there. Yeah. Just to give it a little bit. life. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Now – those worms you were talking about, tell me a little bit. How do you get those? Do okay, so if you go to the local shop, the only place I've seen them are at Tampa Fishing Outfitters. Um, they're made by Gulp. They're called sinking minnows, and they're long worms. They're about seven inches long, I would yeah. say. Um, what I do is I don't like them that they're too long. I cut about two inches off with scissors, and I use the Mustad weedless jig heads. Um, I use about a quarter of an eighth ounce jig head. The reason why I use very light jig heads is when you're throwing to a fish to present, you know, to present that bait to that fish, it's not as, you know, when they're hitting, when it's hitting the water, it's not loud as you throw like a, a you know, mm-hmm. a quarter ounce or a three H jig head will spook that fish. You can get just as far distance with a, you know, eight ounce jig head if you have the right rod. <clears throat> leader too. Leader too. Even, this time of year, yeah, yeah, leader. You want light leader. They'll see it. Yeah. So we throw fifteen to twenty cater. pound Yozuri. Yeah. What twenty? About, when do you start dropping down in November, December? As soon as I know that water, man, that water, you can tell the difference. Water is so clear right yeah. now. That's uh one of the things I notice all the time at this point. And uh, one thing I wanted to ask too, before we get too far away from it, on the mullet schools, I mean, it kind of matters what size of the mullet too, right? When you're when you're chasing Absolutely, those around, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the bigger the mullet, the bigger the redfish are gonna be. On <laughs> Pretty right, much, correct? man. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they come, yeah, mm-hmm. they're with them big time. Um, so now if you're looking, if you're polling and you see redfish slowly cruising, nine out of ten times they're not gonna hit your bait. They're mm-hmm. not feeding. Mm-hmm. You know, usually when they're feeding, they're sitting in a hole. Or their nose, you can tell they're just a little bit diagonal shaped. Like their nose are in the grass and their tails are kind of up. Right. Um, now, when you want to present your bait to these redfish, what I usually do is I throw about a foot to two feet in front of them. And once I work it, once you work this bait to them and they haven't gotten spooked yet, you're halfway there. That's catching you're, this. You're fish. sort of in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Once he, once you see the redfish look at your lure, I usually just pop it one or two times and they will hit the bait. And they'll come and grab it. With redfish, too, I usually, when I do set the hook, I set about two or three times because I've lost a lot of redfish setting the hook once because their mouths so are so tough. So yeah. tough, man. Mm-hmm. So I do about two hook sets, and uh, usually they'll, they'll you know, bring them in. Um, but that's what we look for. That's all we do. I, I like hunting redfish. It's one of the game fish I like to do because it's actually you're hunting for yeah. them. Yeah. They're a migratory mm-hmm. fish. It's gratifying to put all the pieces together. Get out there, find them, and then trick them into biting on the exactly. artificial. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Exactly. And nothing's like taking people fishing that haven't done it before and actually take them sight fishing because once they catch a fish that they sight fished yeah. for themselves, that, it's that, the whole They, they get turned on to it forever. That's, forever. That's why I, I like to. you can never go back to it. Yeah. yeah. Do you get to get, like, I know you got to pull a lot. Do you get... Do you, are you able to get on them from the from the tower there at all? Um, from the back, do you get a lot, or are you mostly just the guy? I, I usually care most about if they hook up first. Right. Then if they hook up, and nine out of ten times, the school's going to spook. But every once in a while, you get that school that doesn't spook, right. then I'll you go ahead and throw. I in will there. get yeah. down, and yeah. then I'll cast, and yep. I, I'll probably hook up, too. Can you hook up with them when they're running? Do they ever pick Sometimes bite on do. the way out? I mean, I... I I kid you not. I was so anyway. <laughs> he, he, we followed a school for about 20 to 30 minutes. They were on mm-hmm. the move the entire time. We could not catch up with them. So one time we were just like, man, forget this. They started to come back. But they were moving. They weren't tailing, but right. they were feeding. You can mm-hmm. tell just the wakes alone they were pushing. And once I got that bait in front of them, I did hook up to one. Once the school chilled out, we're like, okay. So we started pulling again. And the next thing you know, the tide's dropping. They're tailing. Right, and then they just start feeding and right then in front of you. Yeah. So they're right at the right time. Once everything, the pressure dropped. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it's you a gotta love it when that comes together. <laughs> yeah. Then there was one. The last time we went out, I cast it right in the right in the middle. Get this just a oh, little bit closer to you. There you go. I got hit. It somehow got somehow got off, and as that lure was falling back to the bottom, another one hit it. 
Oh, that's crazy. For redfish? Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. A different redfish. That's something yeah. Lady Fisher Jackson did. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? yeah. But to see a red dude, like, That's how what? you can tell how good that bait is. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I was throwing, when we first got on the school, he was throwing the worm. I was throwing a Slayer ink lure. It's a, it's called a Golden Flake or something. It's a solid gold worm looking thing. They would not touch it. And he hooked up <laughs> twice to me not hooking up at all. And this is where I wish I had the sea mule cart. Because then we had to walk. Sorry about it. <laughs> we had to walk a quarter mile back to the boat for me just to switch up to that bait. You uh, know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. once once I got that bait, those schools came back and they actually split up into threes. And we had three people. So we each had our own fish and we each caught our fish the same exact time. That's nice. Did and you, it worked uh, out you didn't perfect, have the cameras man. going that time, no, did you? That of course sucks. not. The one time oh, I don't bring my GoPro. Way to go, Jay. Yeah, yeah. 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 The one time oh, I don't man. bring my GoPro. Hate missing so. out on those but yeah. even <laughs> off in the, what's it called, uh, what's it called, distance, we could see boar tails. Yeah. So, just, I mean, yeah. they were everywhere. Yeah. That's and awesome. Half of the place that we were fishing was out of the water yeah it was land all yeah they're everywhere. stuck man so that was awesome just to see them stuck in their feeding yeah, yeah. so and i took so a friend of mine out not too long ago it, well, I, it was long it was last year <laughs> this time but uh he's never really fished much you know so we come around this corner and then he hears me go <gasps> and that we saw him and they're all tailing yeah. he just didn't understand what he was seeing at first i'm like watch this <laughs> <Your whole tail's laughs> coming you're in for a good time like, just watch man that's this why i can't wait up. i know um I wish I can go tomorrow with uh, Brian and them, but uh, next week we're going to take him out sight fishing. Nice. Mm -hmm. So he'll get to experience that, and I, awesome. it'll be, it'll, I'm looking forward to it. Um, now, what's crazy is how these fish do work because at one spot they'll be in the potholes, you know, looking for you know, say those crustaceans or whatever, and at another spot we go to, these fish are in the sand. Right. And um, these fish, when you go farther up north in the bay, you know, sometimes – um, they do sit in potholes like I was telling you about, but these fish, this particular spot we go to, they sit in the sand and, um, they're aggressive. Now these fish up here are, I mean, when it comes to leader size, like I was saying, don't matter with these fish here. Really? They're way more aggressive and they're a lot bigger. Now these fish aren't in schools. How like the other spot was, these fish were soloed out. Right. But there was more fish there. They just weren't schooling up. I wonder why that is. That's I don't know, but we figured the pattern out there. Mm -hmm. So what we do now is if we don't, if we have a boat with a tower or whatever, we we will get out because they do see that. Right. Um. Oh, so you hop out and wait. We hop out and wait. Yeah. yeah, we'll wait fish for them, and then um, if we're on the, you know, on the our our skiffs, we will just stay on the boat. Right. But you know, you just gotta figure the patterns out. You know, once you figure out the patterns of these fish, you're gonna every time you go out, you're at least gonna get one or two. Right. You know, you mm -hmm. just know where they are. Why is it, you know one of these a captain told me before you know why leave fish to find fish right exactly you know what I mean so if you have if you have a spot that's your own fish just don't keep leave them you know mm -hmm. and then when you're fishing that spot you're going to learn the area better and you're gonna learn like the back of your hand right so always always fish at spots that you know because maybe they're not might be fish there but you'll learn the area why did they leave. So you know, it, it may not even be a good day to fish because it's super windy, but it would be good to get out just to scout. Yeah, yeah. when you're fishing areas. a negative tide, it can be blowing, but you can still see yeah. how the flat is. It seems like on those days you can find some protected areas and get out of the wind mm -hmm. anyway. Easily. Yeah, if you were, you got to be willing to work at it. Yeah. That's well, the other way, we, it was blowing 20, 25 knots, and we went out of this little ramp called Sunlit in the back of Whedon. I didn't want to go over Gandhi because it was five, six kicked. footers. You were laughing already. Yeah. We would have got our butts kicked. Oh, it was five, really six footers, man, in the bay. <laughs> oh so we had to get tucked in until that wind died down. Then we ran to our spots. I hope you weren't pulling that day, man. That's no. where it I actually there. was. He did, oh, and he, and but we phenomenal. were behind, and we were behind this, what's it called, island, so we were kind of protected. Right. But. You could still feel it, you know. The boat wasn't doing Everyone what it should be doing. Everyone catches the bow. You're like, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to dig in. <laughs> you know, stopping it. That's a trip. Yep. And then, uh, you know, sometimes if we're not targeting redfish, we'll go after snook. Now, this time of year, snook are slowly moving into creeks, rivers, right. you know, stuff like that to find warmer water. Um, so what we do is, for snook, you can throw artificial. They, they, it's an artificial bite with snook is still hot. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I use a golden flake color paddle tail. I usually catch more snook on paddle tails than jerk baits because of the action yeah all right there yeah. um you know so if you go up to find the creeks or you troll in the rivers you're gonna catch them a right. lot too especially this time of year like especially when december you know late december early january february they're gonna still be in there that water's gonna be low 70s maybe 60s and um you know how snook they don't like cold water no. at all um but you'll catch some serious snook 
in the creeks and stuff in this time of year, and we do do that. Just because that water is a little warmer, gets a little deeper, muddy bottom. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah, just that's all, the, all the, the above? Mud yeah. is what keeps these fish warm. It keeps the water hot, you know, more hotter than right in a flat so, that's you so know what i mean places where yeah. they during the summer you're not going to get anything don't yeah. even try it it could be 95 yeah, yeah. Back there. Be, i mean roast. no that water temp whatsoever. will be cooking right. them yeah so so. Uh, so now basically when you go say you're going to a new area you haven't been before uh it's low tide you got all these conditions your first thing you're looking for is when you well, get there if, yeah if we're going to a new spot Let's say we're doing for a tournament, we're pre-fishing for a tournament that we have no clue about. Mm -hmm. And if it's a lot, we would like to go on a low tide just to know the flat, like I was saying, where the depressions are, mm -hmm. the troughs, the oyster bars, stuff like that. So when we do find that area, we'll fish those spots that have enough water for fish. And if we, you know, get in luck, we know where to go there. Right. Because usually every morning, this time of year, it's a low tide. So you're just looking for the deeper potholes yeah. and, and, yeah. and troughs and just stuff too. Nervous water. And then, and then when you get to high tide, you fish those potholes that didn't have water go back before. To, yeah, right. You know what I mean? Because they're gonna come out of the exactly. Or the, uh, uh, yep. What's it called? Oyster bars too. Yeah. That are that are now covered. Yep. Mm -hmm. They'll go on top. You know what I mean? That's the perfect crustacean. That's crustacean heaven for mm -hmm. reds. You know what I mean? And like those sponges I was talking about, with those lug worms are inside. They right. eat that too. Is so. there something you do on the tough days? You know, like like, like it's been. It's windy. It's just yeah. Um, it's I'll just tell you this. Up. I mean, of course, protected areas. But is there something you can do? I went out with uh, my friend Vince. He's got a tower on his boat, and we went out Saturday. The bite was absolutely tough, and what it didn't help with this tower e either. Like I said, you know, they see that, especially in that clear in the summertime. Now, you know, what I mean, it's so mm -hmm. murky and stuff. But in the, in the wintertime, they can. Right. So. We said, you know, I'm not getting out of the water. It's cold. <laughs> we went around this island. We caught some creek chubs in this, and um, creek chubs. And there's like, I guess you can call them sand perch. I've never seen. It's a really big black looking fish. I know sand perch are more like t um, clear. You know what I mean? Right. Like they're not. They're like the color of the sand. So we threw those man, whole, and uh, we didn't have shrimp or anything. And we just sat in that spot where I knew their fish were. And I mean, ten minutes later, they were hooking up after all day of sight fishing. My bad, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so oh, good. I earthquake! Earthquake! Yeah. <laughs> I'm switching cameras. <laughs> but yeah, we used bait and we caught. So those you, you go for on those really tough days. It's better just to switch over. And to especially some live you have bait. people that you mm -hmm. you wanted to you know produce fish for that they right. they're not familiar. They've never been fishing or they want to fish for that. Obviously, we want to fish for artificial. That, you know, for they can get that adrenaline rush right, we're talking yeah. about. But no, we had to get bait and it worked. You know, it was at the end of the day too, man. It just started loading up, and that's why when that tide changed, it was still really low, but that incoming started coming in. Mm -hmm. Usually in the summertime or in the winter time, the best time to get redfish is in that middle third of the tide when the water's really moving. Right, that's what really right. get. You really know when the start the tide starts really moving when those mullets start jumping. Yeah. And, stuff. and actually, the wind all will the pick action, up. all the action picks yeah, up. Yeah, action exactly. picks up. Yeah. Action. Yeah, I try yeah. to ask everybody that because you know you want to increase your odds when the, those tough days. That, yep. mm -hmm. A lot of people just stay home. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually, you know, sometimes which is nice sometimes on the weekend. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I go out anyway because you know maybe I don't, but there's always those times that it'll surprise you. You know, mm -hmm. you'll run into. The, I've caught some pretty decent size yeah. redfish on those rough days it's just beat yep. up water's dirty you know? and you know what and man i'll tell you there's like a serious like cold front coming in saturday i think and mm -hmm. it's supposed to be in the 20s and 30s yeah so if you go out friday i'm telling you if you all go out right friday, before you guys are going to absolutely kill those fish yeah it just the triggers them they know they need to feed because once that cold front hits they're gonna get real lethargic yeah. they're not really gonna want to eat they're gonna be real mm -hmm. slow and stuff like that so i would go on a friday saturday i wouldn't even try to fish i mean you still might be able to get some you never know that day after those big fronts are never yeah, yeah you know mm -hmm. or and after Maybe. the day, like day like after today. the front the day after the front too is hot too you know yeah mm -hmm. so definitely that matters big time you know make sure you're not fishing on a cold front coming through or any type of front make sure you want to go on the day before the day after just Look up, go on your news, you know, look look at the night before what's going on. Right. I always do that. I always look. I have this app. Um, it's National Forecast. You know, it's yeah. so accurate, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, like on Tuesday, it was 
isolated shower and thunderstorms. I was like, no, nah, I ain't going. We out. have some <laughs> local tides here that are terrible. Yeah. Just some of the news stations. You're no, like, oh, where were they talking about? If you see exactly. five to knots, add another ten yeah, to fifteen. Exactly. What I say every time. Man. Yeah, we every go out time. in the kayaks all the time, and for some reason. On the way out, the wind's in your face, yeah. and then all the way back, the wind's it's in your still face. in your face. You're like, well, at least on the way back, it'll be uh, behind. <laughs> no, it's going to switch, <laughs> and it's going to be 10 miles an hour or more than what they said it was. We had it one time. It, it was for uh, a tournament. I think it was one of the old Salts tournaments. And one we of were, the first ones we did. Yeah. So it's windy, but we're like, man, we're just going to we'll paddle back into the protected area. No big deal. Yeah. We get to the island, it gets even worse. And luckily, we br we always bring extra gear, so we ended up stuck on the island for the night, man. There was it got what? so bad, there was no paddling back. There was just we we're were like at the old house, yeah, hunkered down. I had some buckets buried. Yeah, we we uh, <laughs> what? we uh, beer we had we had beer, we had, we had beer and food, <laughs> and, good, you know? that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as so, long as there's beer. Uh, yeah, those, and uh, of course we didn't make it back for the tournament either. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was yeah. no getting anything. But yeah, I was trying to pick everybody's brains on that stuff. You know, uh, I, I uh, you know, speaking about kayak fishing and everything, w when we uh, go out a lot, I'll, I'll take the kayak and get to where I'm going, and then get out and wade fish. A yeah. lot. A lot. I mean, a kayak alone is stealthy, man. Yeah. Do you guys ever kayak fish or anything? I used mostly? to before I had my boat when right. I was about kind of hard to walk away from the better boat. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But listen, I'll tell you. Kayak fishing, you know, you can produce a lot of fish. You're yeah. so quiet, man, you know. That's just like that's why we pull. I mean, we sometimes literally get on top of these fish. Before they even know. We were, we were actually one time, man, um, our buddy was in the front, and there was redfish just in the grass stuck in there. And we were to the point it was at the boat, and he was flicking at them, and they were hitting these baits. We do that in the kayak. So it's, I'll look down. Like, it's a 14-foot 14 foot kayak and then you look down and yep. midway through the kayak it's still sitting there yeah <laughs> and then it looks up oh and yeah then, and then jets off i know? i swear by trolling troll motors are good to work with you know mm -hmm. in the summertime and stuff it means a lot they're not as pressured you mm -hmm. know as what you say mm -hmm. but you know on saturday we, we had no pulling platform so we're using the trolling motor those tailing reds were about from me i would say about 20 30 feet as soon as i turned it on the lowest speed they went down just i was like mm -hmm. messed up i was like dude we're gonna have to get out and there was there was one time and I think it was August I was pulling up to a school of reds that I knew was there but I didn't know where they actually were and I look right in front of the boat and two feet in front of the boat there's probably two to two to three hundred redfish just all sitting there and I'm trying to back the boat up slowly and we end up getting two out of that school I mean nice. you could be right on top of them and but just back to back to back out like oh yeah, yeah I was like yeah Watch out! But <laughs> that trolling motor, especially now, those fish have been pressured since. Mm. Well, if you would have kicked June, on the trolling motor, would have ruined. Oh, everything. they would have been gone. Gone. In a flash. Man. Yeah. I mean, I, we actually did a test one time, just to hear the vibration of trolling motors. We had on the lowest speed, and I was probably I was a good distance, man. I mean, over a hundred feet. And you, you know, you stuck your ear in the water. Right, you hear, right. You, hear, you can hear everything. I mm -hmm. mean, can you imagine if you're that close to <clears> fish and they hear that? They're they're traumatized, gone. man. They're gone. Especially the bigger fish because a lot of them have already been mm -hmm. caught before. Yeah, so exactly. They, they know yeah. what that noise is, yeah. you know. So, yep. yep, that's how they are, man. That's why we never do it. Do you guys have a favorite inshore lure that you like to use? Okay, yeah, you're right. Um, so the first of all, like you talking about hard baits or soft plastic? Whatever. Like if you had one bait to go out with for the day and you had to stick with that Desert bait. Island, one bait. <laughs> okay, Nerdy. definitely a weedless jig head with a, this time of year. Um, a worm, any type of worm, right? You know, uh, in the summertime, I strictly use Z-Man paddle tails, the pinfish color, soft plastics. Huh? With yeah. with a, um, I use either a trout eye jig head, or I use the the ones that come with those Z-Mans. You know, they yeah. work really yeah, well. Yeah, those are those are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, like those. those are man. Let me tell you, those baits. I use, I just used stopped using recently. You can still use them. I was using them the other day. Those baits. I never even pop or you know anything on those paddle tails. It's steady. If you ever see a Z-Man Z-Man paddle tail in action yeah the, just the retrieving action awesome. that's all you need to do that's yeah. all i do that i can't the, help myself though man I, you just want to you know what it is? I, know what you I, I tell I myself to do that all the time like yeah. yeah just try a different retrieve this time yeah. and mm -hmm. i'll i'll accidentally do it like oh yeah man what am i doing you know, yeah like, exactly yeah try yeah. to do it what, do you have a favorite um i actually like to trout fish in december i like to wade during 
those mods. I used the mirror lure, the mirror lure, mirror dean. Mirror dean. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The trout color is the one that I mm -hmm. tend to yeah, have. Yeah, that's a good color. Yeah, yeah. So that one and the electric chicken. I like the name and yeah. it tends to work. <laughs> right. So, so you can catch anything on a trout. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like anything that shines. I always yeah. wonder if that color worked. I don't yeah. know. Electric chicken. I love it. I'm boring. I, I use white a lot. White oh really? That's a good color, color this time yeah. of year. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. In the winter, I've had 50 to 60 trout days. Yeah. Nice. On those. I on, like trout personally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this time of year. They're yeah. fun. 20s to 20, 25 inch Watch trout. Watch out for man. those ladies. Biggest <laughs> one. Biggest trout. Biggest trout I've ever caught. Um, last year. I think it was January. I got a 25 and a half inch trout on a Z-Man diesel minnow. Nice. I, that's my biggest 24, I think. 24, 25. Yeah. I had, this is a funny story. I had a 26 incher. I'm out in the kayaks and I have my son with me. So I catch it and I'm so excited. I'm like, it's my biggest 26 inches. I'm like, yes. And I put it in the cooler because you can keep one over 20. And uh, we hadn't caught <laughs> crap that day. That was the mm. one and it was the biggest one. So I'm paddling along and we're fishing some more. And this is like 15 minutes later. All of a sudden, I hadn't put the strap back across the cooler. This thing comes busting out of the cooler and goes back out no. in the water. I'm like, no. And Bre <sighs> my son comes by and goes, it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids are so competitive. Yeah, man. he's like, I'm going to tell everybody it's a huge lie. It never happened. I'm like, no. Um, <laughs> what about Snook? What's your biggest... Uh, 42 snook, 42 red. Those are my two biggest. Oh, wow. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, my... Uh, Both from the same place. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> cool. That's a, that's a pretty good spot, man. Yeah, cool. too bad it's uh, it's uh, closed off now. The sand took it over, but yeah. It was a great spot until the sand <laughs> came up and ruined everything. Oh, uh, yeah. My biggest red is also 42 inches. Yeah? I got it um, fishing for black drum. It was mixed in with the black drum, and it ate a crab. Nice. So, I've yeah, never caught a red the black drum. Do you ever run, use man. those fiddler crabs? Do you ever? I never. Have you ever had experience? No. I was using a blue crab, like a big blue crab. I always find Ate there are thousands thing. of them everywhere, and I always heard they're good, but I've, I've never, I never broke down and tried them to yeah, catch anything. Yeah, me either. Never used them. It is, I know man. they work. I get out there. I just. That's the thing about using lures too, man. Like, I enjoy whenever I go out with the bait chucking guys that I go out with. You got a couple of hours sometimes or you know an hour hour and a half of some of the best time to fish yeah. and you're getting bait I'm like yeah. it makes me crazy sometimes yeah, no, I know you have to yeah. sometimes especially if you have clients or whatever yeah. but like when you're personally just going out fishing for me there's nothing better than just being able to load up a good lure a few good lures and just going and head out boat stays yeah. Like, clean yeah kind of like we did yeah that bro I mean because sometimes you're catching bait like dude it's 9 o'clock yeah, we got here at exactly. seven. I'm like, man, we should have been fishing right yeah. when the sun was coming up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes me crazy yeah, sometimes. Yeah, no, I know man. what you mean. Then, I know uh, what you mean. And then you, then you have the people telling you you can't catch big <clears throat> fish on lures. It's a lie. And I think that's a lie, that's man. A lie. I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, well, what's your biggest fish? I'm like, yeah. I caught mine on a gulp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still think the toughest thing for me, and Jake's actually got really good at it, when I find a good spot, I want to keep fishing that spot over and over. I'm terrible about that. He always wants to go out, explore new places, mm -hmm. and I know I need to do that more because why fish one spot and overfish that spot when you can go find more yeah. places? I have the same exact problem because I it's hard to walk away when you know mm -hmm. I know those fish are right there right now. Mm -hmm. I know it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been fishing this area for twenty years, <laughs> and you know that's uh that's my one thing. Like everybody's like, oh, you haven't fished over on this side over here in Tampa? I never leave Pinellas County, man. Yeah. It's <laughs> such great fishing over yeah. there. I hardly ever leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's that was my mistake. I just started rectifying that recently. You know? you know, you know what I tell people a lot too. That now, let's say you're fishing your money spot, right? And if you know, and you, and you can feel like, man, if we haven't gotten hit yet, yeah. this, this spot's no good. Mm -hmm. Now, when it's you go to a it. new spot, think about it, and you're not catching, you don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah, you right. know what I mean? Like you will never know if this is a bad time to be mm -hmm. here because you've never fished it. It keeps right. you, it keeps your blood flowing to find these fish rather you go to a spot that you know about that you're not catching you're like dude if we haven't caught none now here yet there ain't no fish now where do we go yeah you know what i mean let's mm -hmm. go to another spot that i always hit yeah you know? exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah I, i'm definitely trying to find new areas do you, do you like to you branch out a lot then you try and find new places so, all the time um i fish I, i'm six generations in tampa um I fish a lot from I fish all the way from Joe's Bay all the way up to you know Felipe Park. Oh, I got you. I mean, it's, yeah, that's <laughs> so. I mean, that's I fish all that area. Um, now, 
when we go, like actually we did one time on the mullet run, we went to Jupiter. Oh really? We did. We said, you know, screw it, we're going. You know what I mean? It was a great experience. Did it go good? It was good. See, in the morning, we didn't know. At first, we had to obviously catch mullet. Um, now we saw these boats, and all the boats at Jupiter, they're big. Yeah, these are offshore boats. Um, so we found this little, you know, little channel. All these boats are on the net. I mean, we're talking like big offshore boats. We see water's crystal clear. Mm -hmm. We catch our mullet in what an hour? Oh, probably less than that. Yeah. Probably twenty. So then we go minutes. out to the beach after we pass the jetties. You know, at that inlet, Jupiter Inlet. Mm -hmm. I don't we know start, if you guys have ever been there. I it was the no. scariest thing I it's have scary, ever been. It's scary, man. In. Especially on a Maverick. Man, a my flat 16 and a half foot Maverick surrounded by all these 40, 45 foot boats. And, uh, just putting off and the foot swells weights. off of, and the swells Huge. outside the inlet. Yeah. I want to cry. <laughs> Listen, so we didn't know we couldn't find the, the the mullet run. Like there were none, so we just started trolling, and we got kept getting broken off. Trolling, trolling mullet. Yeah, we were trolling we're just... mullet behind a maverick. <laughs> and then this picture of that. Yeah. <laughs> so then we like, you know what? Screw it. Let's actually, you know, search the area. At the end of the day, we get at on these mullet. There's thousands. Right. Tarpon everywhere. Tr crushing. Tarpon just crushing jumping from me to you, hundred pounders, yeah. man. We oh. hooked up to one, broke us off. And then some big jacks, like 15, 20 pound jacks, man. It was awesome. That's you know? fun, man. I yeah. like catching big yeah, jacks. Especially, like, that, like I said, uh, at, people, on the East Coast. People rag you know on I mean? them, man. Yeah. But oh. that's a hell of a fight, mm -hmm. especially clients. You man. know, you tied into something when you fight a big jack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Clients, There's bro. no better so way to that's test money to me. your yeah. knots, to test your new tackle. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to test it. Yeah. yeah. Just get on a big jack because you know that is going to pull just as hard as anything else. They're actually, it's funny because after it's a you know slow day of fishing, you're like, Let's go get some jacks at least. Let's get the line tight. You know, Lady right, fish, right. something. Yeah. Um, yeah. That will save a day, man. If you've got some kids or somebody like that. Yeah. Oh, that's all I'll do. You can go kids, out into yeah. the middle of the pass and catch ladyfish. Monsters at that, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, dude. You know what's yep. funny, though? Uh, we, we were on, uh, I don't even want to say where, but we were on one of the passes. And uh, it's uh, just sun's going down, and we got our snook poles. You know, so, so we're, we're ready to go fishing for snook and reds in the past and everything. And uh, so we start looking at his phone. And uh, you messed with these cameras, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, I bet you haven't been doing that the whole time. <laughs> no, either. I have. No, yeah, I've I been have. looking I back have. and forth. I've been I seeing have. you. Yeah. Anyway, so he just kind of casually flips the – doesn't even realize the lure's in the water. And we're both looking at his phone like, what's the tide going to be doing, man? All of a sudden, at a corner of my eye, I see easily – 120 130 pound tarpon comes just raw, like 10 wow. feet from us yeah we're walking along the beach there i mean because it's a drop off right in the past mm -hmm. this thing i go is that on your no way in the, the wow. it was, there was no stopping it was just yeah, pop no. the leader man he just was pop yelling, the leader. go like this make it jump again i went like this one time it jumped one time and then went down and popped the yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. but yeah just i mean yeah <laughs> not even really holding the pole you yeah, know what yeah, i mean like, yeah it's just it was a trip. <laughs> I was, uh, last March, I was just idling out of a spot that had this huge, huge channel. And I saw this tarpon roll off and probably 40, 50 feet. So I kept idling to it, rolled up again. So I'm like, all right, I was put on a, uh, uh, what's it called, a greenie. Mm -hmm. I put on about a two inch greenie. This is when greenies aren't big at yeah, all. Right. So I tossed it right where it was because I could see bubbles coming up. And all of a sudden, I see this huge wake. I'm like, dang it. I spooked it. All of a sudden, the line gets tight, and you see about a 100-pound tarpon jump off in the distance. And I'm on a 2,500. Yeah. Real. It's I'm not like, happening. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I didn't think this out, did I? <laughs> <laughs> so I got two or three more jumps out of it, then it just I got all broke my the line. Back. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, Lucky. you will. Yeah. yeah, I lost my entire school. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, I had that happen story. to me once, the last time we were out. We had our poles out, and I just ran back to the, the kayaks oh for a God, second. Yeah. And uh, he's going, Jay, your pole, your pole. I come running up. I'm like, find it, get it, get it, get it. Yeah. So he starts <clears throat> starts to find it and goes to hand it off to me. Now, I don't have my headlight on, so I can't see. And right as I, I'm like, how much line is <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I no. Know. I, I 300 was, yards, no. just gone. So, 20, 20, 20, 25 dollars gone. Uh, like, just, <laughs> like, I barely had a chance to even to, to look. Neither one of us had light at that point. And, we're totally not prepared dang. for a tarpon, you know. We're open for oh, snow. Was it a tarpon? Yeah. It was okay. just, you saw it? Okay. Like a train just took off with it. Yeah. You know what I mean, it was over. Yeah. It's happened so many times. Yeah. <laughs> tarpon is my personal favorite fish. That's, that's all right. 
I love tarpon. I could catch those yeah. forever. I've never got to boat one yet, but we've jumped in tons. We got a yeah. nice little spot that nobody knows about where they're back in this channel. Yeah. And it, they're never really over 100 pounds or anything, but like for the gear that we got, man, it's. You don't it's want a, anything over yeah. 100 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. We'll jump them. And they'll go flying across the flat tail, walking the stuff, yeah. and break you off. And you're like, yeah, let's do it yeah. again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just biting on uh, chunks of mullet, you know? Yeah, yeah. Don't eat anything, man. Yeah. Do you guys Scavengers. ever, ever uh, do you do charters for that, or do you? Every time I, when I do do charter, it's mostly um, inshore, man. You know, snook, trout, redfish, flounder. If you, if Very you specific of what you're trying yeah. to get into. Yeah, and like train. I'm, like I said, I was trying to, I'm trying to target my clientele um, strictly. I want to do artificial sight fishing in the winter, obviously in the summertime. Right. Real we'll technical bait, stuff. Real technical stuff. Yeah. People that actually want to catch instead of catching. You so know, it's a certain fish. It's you know, a certain like type Spanish, of angler that does like that. Yeah. Spanish mackerel and. Uh, and um, you know stuff like that. I want them to target a trophy fish. You right. know? If yeah. we catch one or two of those all day, and that's for me, that's worth it. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I get that's it. what my the target people is. that understand the game a lot. Exactly. And, and, exactly. And, yeah. And work towards perfection in the art. Absolutely. Because it really is art too. It's Once art, you man. get to that part, yep. it's the art of inshore it really fishing. Is. You know? It really is. One of my favorite things to do every summer, I go fly fishing for. Uh, oh, I have uh, not found the patience for that yet. And I mean, when the first time you see a tarpon hit a fly that you presented perfectly, right. it's second to none. And that goes back to what Jake is saying about sight fishing mm -hmm. and just being so, so tech, tech, technical right. about it. It's so just amazing to see that. And the first time you ever see that, you're, you're, you're hooked. Get hooked. hooked. Yeah. That's why I'm going to get him his first tarpon on fly, on fly yeah. which will just be a great experience. How long do you think it takes an average person to get de adept enough at fly fishing to even I, attempt that? I, I'll tell you, I've learned, I went to Tampa Fishing Outfitters and uh, the guy that works there, Cody, he, he taught me in 10 minutes, man. <laughs> just, the really? just, just the basic, of, you know, I, a lot of people know they bring the line out and they bring it in, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You don't even have to do that. That's just a faster method to put to present, uh, you know, present that more fly advanced. to that fish faster. Mm -hmm. Right. But I like it that way. But um, yeah, I just got my own little fly set up and uh, it's been sitting in the garage. It's been ready to go. You know what I mean? So I'm definitely have to break down and try. Yeah, it. we're gonna do uh, really when tarpon. Fun. You know, when their tarpon season's coming back, mm -hmm. we're definitely gonna do that. You know, mm -hmm. he's got a uh, one of his dad's friends that just strictly does that, man. So does he's gonna take in the keys. Yeah, he, uh, he's so gonna take us on that's that. What I learned. Learned. How Our to thing is, from. we we actually we get him on we. We, when we go sight fishing, we get him on those reds, and then his return mm -hmm. is for the tarpon on yeah. the fly. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. A, and it, it's, a, it's a great it's a win, win, win. man. Yeah, it's great. That works so I, we can't wait. We you know, I was watching a video the other day. These guys were fly fishing for Makos and stuff. You ever, ever seen that? Never seen that like at all. Like, <laughs> they tease them up to the back of the boat with, like, a regular bait, and then yeah. they pull that bait, and then the guy starts presenting the fly. I was blown away. I was like, are you kidding me? These guys, and they were not small fish, man. These no, were, yeah. Six seven foot makeups. Wow. <laughs> people do that for oh 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 what's it called marlin. People do that for yeah. Sales. I've seen oh, that on up to the boat. Yeah, yeah. then yeah. you just oh. like almost just let the fly on out the, the back. On the fly, man. That I've seen sick. that. I've I never seen that. Thought about that. Yeah, man. Those yeah. reels. How are sick huge would that be too. on the fly? Too sick. Wow. That'd be amazing. Crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, uh, guys, um, where where can we follow you guys? Uh, on, on the insta or uh, so, Instagram and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, on my Instagram, it's cap. C A P T underscore J Fernandez thirteen, um, Facebook's Jake Fernandez, and uh, you know we also have the Fish Brain and Short Team page. That's just pretty if, much that. On if somebody Facebook. wanted a charter with you, where would they get a hold? Uh, just on my on my Instagram, man. Just go there and DM me. You okay. know what I mean? That's probably the easiest way to do it. So follow you. Uh, Twitter Kyle underscore R underscore underscore Grow Seven, and uh, Instagram Kyle Grow Seven, and Facebook Kyle Grow. Awesome. Um, definitely looking forward to getting out with you guys sometime next, next week. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have these guys back on here doing some other stuff, some fishing reports. Uh, so keep an eye out for these guys. Thanks for coming in, guys. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Us. Thank you. All right, I'd like to thank Jake. And I forgot to mention his name in the intro. It's Kyle Grow, was also here with him. And uh, I'd like to thank them for coming out and talking to us about shallow water fishing. And we're going to see a lot more of those guys. They're going to be fishing with us a lot here in the future. Uh, make sure you follow them on Instagram and Facebook. You can follow us at fishpodnetwork.com and also on Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff, Fish Pod Network. Uh, the next episode is going to be a good one too. I got Paul Fleming coming in, so make sure you check out uh, episode 10. See you in the next one.